Uh, welcome back, everybody. <laughs> uh, it's great to see you all. Uh, welcome back to another session for Wander Home. Um, this is Greatest Guardians Gaming Network. Uh, this is Emma's network. So, <laughs> Emma, how about you introduce <laughs> yourself? Hi, I'm Emma. I use she, her pronouns. Uh, and Sky is taking the lead on this one and doing a very good job at it. I'm very excited to continue playing some Wander Home today. Uh, thank you uh, for the compliment. Uh, Michaela, would you like to keep the compliment train chugging? I will accept as many <laughs> as you've got in you. <laughs> um, yeah, let me just go ahead and settle in. I've actually, I've got some notes. Um, no, I am also here. I uh, just uh, I play usually with these lovely folks, and I'm excited to play Wander Home too. It was so much fun last time. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like we got a good feel for it last time, and I'm ready to really jump into the storytelling with you. So, um, yeah, let's let's do this. Very cool. Uh, and I'm Sky. Uh, I will be the guide tonight uh, for at least some of this session, and we'll see where it takes us. Uh, <laughs> and possibly uh, we get to experience the guideless system <laughs> tonight. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, yeah, and I use Hide pronouns. Um, and it also looks like we have been graced with the presence of a uh, feline friend. Yes, this is Lyra. Uh, I have no control <laughs> over her movement. Um, so she may pop in and uh, say hello. Mm -hmm. She Excellent. likes my Apple Pencil right now, which is what she is very intrigued with. <laughs> also, right. I don't think I even introduced myself. I'm Michaela. You she her pronouns. Hello. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm just, just so ready to go. Let's do Nailed it. Yes. Welcome, Lyra. <laughs> Welcome, Michaela. Mm -hmm. Apparently, I'm here now. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, Lyra needs to, to fill out a playbook, though, if she wants to join us at the table. Sounds good. <laughs> I'll, she's got I'll do the my apple best. <laughs> <laughs> she does have an Apple Pencil. Like It looks like she's ready to go. Do you so. hear that? Do you hear that? Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, well, uh, tonight we're going to uh, jump into session two, where we have uh, already played a session, and we get to experience Wander Home's episodic and transitory nature tonight. Uh, so let's start kind of with a brief recap. Uh, if we could maybe go around the virtual table here and... Uh, introduce our characters. Uh, let's start with Michaela this time. Okay. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. I am Alice. I am a very fluffy sheep dog who uses she, her pronouns. Uh, you'll find me tending to my herd of, of bumbles. They're quite a diverse group. And, um, uh, we just like to travel and enjoy the seasons as they go and see what life brings us. Very good. Um, and then I am uh, playing Kova. Uh, Kova uh, uses they, them pronouns and is a caracal and uh, is currently twirling down the road of whatever place we are traveling, traveling from and to. Uh, as they are a dancer. Uh, and we are joined by... Oh, uh, hi. Um, I'm Pinwheel, and I'm really excited to be here. But, you know, it's a little overwhelming being on the road sometimes. I, oh yeah, I use she, they pronouns. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm looking for something. Well, I'm looking for someone, but... Yeah. Um, well, it's, it's good to have the group here. Um... Hi, everybody. Hello. Good. We're, we're getting the, the deep pinwheel lore here. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. All right. Um, speaking so of, yeah, speaking of <laughs> which, uh, last time we stopped by a tower, uh, a tall, rickety old stone watchtower uh, that looked over fields and had a beautiful view of the far off painted mountains in the distance. Uh, 
Alice and Pinwheel, you used the tower to find some information about something, somewhere, some, some, something that Pinwheel is looking for uh, that may be in this mountainous region that is very far off in the distance. Uh, and then uh, Kova mostly used it as a high place to nap, um, which is fitting for a feline. Um, you met Respectable. A... Thank you. Uh, you met a deer named Sorrel, who tends the watchtower, uh, lives there by himself now, uh, and let your herd of bumbles uh, go to pasture in the back there. Um, Very kind. We ha- yeah, we had just traveled from a dark forest traveled to the tower and now we are picking up at some point and this is part of wander home's play style and system is that at each new session we begin a journey again and so there are a couple of things that we have to establish because uh we have not prepped any of this really uh it, this is a system where we build the world together and explore it and that is the play uh for for what we're doing tonight so let's start with what time of year is it wander home has a five season calendar uh the seasons are called leap bright breathe silt and chill with leap being the equivalent of spring uh, bright being very similar to summer. Breathe being kind of a liminal season that is not too hot, not too cold, not quite harvest time yet. Uh, silt being harvest time, uh, very similar to fall. And chill being like winter. We were in the month of till soil, the first of the two months of leap. The next month is monsoon. So what are our thoughts to... Do we want to stay in till soil or do we want to progress to the heavy unbroken rains of monsoon? I do like the idea of progressing forward. Um, by how much time I'm not certain, but I don't imagine something too long. Mm-hmm. What do you all think? Well, we were going toward the mountains to see what we found there and they were pretty far off so i imagine moving to the next month isn't a wild thing we're all on foot you know we're not we're not in a rush mm-hmm. we're not hurried <laughs> so i feel we could move on to monsoon if you're interested I'm, I'm i'm interested to see what this place what this place is like in the uh in the rain mm-hmm. i agree okay then uh let's move to monsoon uh and let's talk a little bit about what monsoon is like i will go up towards the um part of the uh playbook here that talks about the five seasons and the month of monsoon um let me talk a little bit about uh the season of leap that we are still in uh the first full moon of that shines over the half marks the season of leap uh it's composed of till soil when it's time to unthaw the ground and plant crops and monsoon where the rains are heavy and constant The holiday after monsoon is called the sun parade and that marks the start of the season of bright uh which we have not yet met so do we want to say that we are early in monsoon and the rains have just begun do we want to say that we are in the middle of monsoon and it's been raining for a long time I feel like the end of monsoon is a bit too far off for for where we're going. I love early monsoon. All right. Works uh, for me. I, I think that's a good call. Makes sense. Okay. All right. Cool, cool. Then I will 
write down that we are in early monsoon. I am keeping track of all of this okay. in a document I will have to share with you <laughs> at some point. Um, okay. All we are told about monsoon from the book is that it is a month of unbroken rain. Um, the seasons tend to have a first month that sets the tone for the season and a second that extends it or intensifies it a bit. And where the growing season is what dominates, or excuse me, the planting season is what dominates uh, the month of till soil, monsoon is now time for the rains of the world to fall and in a heavy and unbroken way. So let's keep this in mind as we build our first nature together. In Wander Home, each place that we visit is a nature. That nature itself has natures uh, that we use to describe it. And so we are all working off of the PDF uh, for Wander Home, the, the rule book, guidebook, whatever you want to call it, uh, the handbook. Um, and before session, each of us chose three natures we would be interested in exploring. And so what I'm hoping is that we come up with a common theme uh, that even if we all chose nine completely different natures total, uh, that we can sort of parse out what we are looking for here. Okay. Um, and so I chose my natures with till soil in mind <laughs> but I kind of same that, yeah I think that with monsoon now in mind I'd like to possibly even keep some of these I think port is one that I'm interested in exploring as well as farm and then I think with monsoon and its tone uh, I would be interested in exploring hallow um, so port, hallow, and farm. Um, how about you, Emma? I picked bridge. I picked swamp. Mm -hmm. And I picked hallow. All right. So we have some commonality there. Good, good. And <clears throat> how about you? Michaela. Okay, so again, a little bit with till soil in mind. Um, I chose hillock. Hmm. That was a close second for me. Glen. Okay. Very, I'm really apparently in the verdant mindset here. Mm -hmm. um, and wilderness. Okay, um, I like that. I really love the idea of hollow. I think okay. I'm perfectly happy to go with that okay um let's go with hello then sounds uh, good we also have the ability although the rule book doesn't really talk too much about this uh we can combine elements of natures uh so if we think of for example um if we think of the tower from the previous session we could have placed our tower in the mountains. We could have made our tower a part of a monastery, which is another nature in the, in the handbook. We could have placed it by a lake. By a road is what I had placed it by um, when I built the nature for our previous session. Uh, but now that we're building these together, we can start with monastery. And then perhaps our conversations about, or not monastery, I'm sorry, hallow was what we had gone with. Our conversation had uh, or can lead us to where we've been, where we are going, what is in between those place, places, where could this hollow be? Um, all right, so we're going to go with hollow. And it is early monsoon. Um, Taking a look at page 150 in the text, 160 on the PDF, uh, a hallow is a sacred place where gods and mortals mingle. Uh, when we arrive here, 
we need to decide a rule that we all must follow. We have three things that the place can always do. Um, we choose two aesthetics and we choose one folklore. And this is true of any nature that we go to. Uh, we are given possibly a special condition for the hallow. The rule that we all must follow is um, something that we need to decide uh, as our special condition. And then each nature gives uh, gives things it can always do. And then we have to pick aesthetics and a folklore. Okay. Whether or not the folklore is known to us as characters is for us to decide. Um, with each of us, I think our, each of our playbooks loans us to being able to know or not know the folklore of a place. Uh, for example, the dancer can tell it as a story. The shepherd could have heard it from, uh, you know, good old, good old shepherd wisdom. Uh, and who knows where the fool got those, those fanciful ideas. <laughs> right. Um, and then there are there are other ways that we can handle that as well. But um, let's start with uh, the place can always do these things. A uh, hallow can always describe the gods that live here and their mystery. Can always offer someone the chance to break this place's rules to make their life easier. And it can give someone a token when they bend over backwards to respect this place's rules. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So let's take a look at its aesthetic elements. I'm not going to read all of them off, but maybe if I can pick the folklore, possibly, and the two of you can each pick an aesthetic element. Okay. Okay. I like that. I like. And at each spot. Not with ju just with the not just with the aesthetics, but also with the folklore. Um, we are given for every possible nature as our final choice something else of your own invention. Um, <laughs> so that we are not like limited by what is in this book. This is a jumping off point. I think I would choose watchful eyes in the shadows. Mm. I like that. Mm -hmm. okay. We both went a little bit spooky because I <laughs> thought forgotten offerings could okay. really be yeah. A learning point. I like that vibe, the two coming together. Yeah. <clears throat> forgotten offerings. Could could the forgotten offerings take the shape of something with eyes? Could these be the mm. watchful eyes, or do we want to keep these separate? I do kind of like the idea of something actively watching us while we're here. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe there's a way we can have both um okay. what would be something that could look like an eye like a type of nut a type of um a type of fruit or something that has been left as an offering mm. or a gem a gem yeah hmm. perhaps um tokens of one of the gods is eye shaped mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. it could be like the evil eye almost but mm -hmm. like an mm -hmm. almond shape with the, yeah. even potentially with the painted eye in it mm -hmm. or carved or eye yeah I was really picturing like wooden tokens that mm -hmm. perhaps you would leave my mind was going to stone like a river stone with a painted oh. eye on it mm -hmm. 
or something engraved like into stone. So, I mean, it could be. Why can't these, these be different forms? Yeah, that different yeah. people would have left to represent the mm -hmm. same thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And then these watchful eyes that are in the shadows, I mean, that brings a whole new meaning to these beings, creatures, whatever it is that is watching us. I mean, only. Yeah, I don't know if, if they're watching us and their deity okay. is also focused on eyes. I think that's interesting as well. Okay. Then... I think then I'm going to leave the folklore for Kova to tell. Um, mm. And... I, I think that their role as the dancer could lend to some storytelling in this situation of that this would be something that they could be familiar with. Uh, Kova is from a far off land with a different culture and traditions, and this could be reminiscent of something that they know, but still different. Okay. Um, I will have to invent that <laughs> in a few moments. Um, and I guess there are two other questions we could, um, we could ask, bef uh, before we finish building the place, um, it, which is what is the rule we must all follow? What rule would we set in a place, watchful eyes and forgotten offerings that we encounter in a heavy downpour? By rule, are we saying that this is something that our characters are talking about making sure we are all doing? Or is this something mm -hmm. as the players, are we saying this is what our characters should do? Or um... Character. This is, okay. or at least it, it should be, it, it's kind of like a, a part of the place. There is a code of conduct for this mm. type of place. Okay. Like when you when you go to uh, a temple or a church or a place of religion, there are expectations about your behavior, about your dress, dress. your yeah. different elements mm -hmm. of being there and being a yeah. part of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, about one's purity, right, of soul or of body, right? Um. Hey. Hey, Alice. Co Kova. Yes, um, mm -hmm. What does this sign say? Um, it's got some pictures of a couple eyes. Um, they're carved into the wood. And uh, I, I think there's a carving of... I don't know. It looks maybe like... Maybe like a leaf. Um, hmm. Well, what does it say, though? Sorry well, to put you on the spot. It it appears to me that this here with the eyes, it says one must always be awake. And down here with the leaves, it says one must always always take a rest and i'm not entirely sure i guess kova i'm sorry i don't think you can take a nap here well that should be fine we did nap under a tree just a moment ago <laughs> I, what i you did we were hardly there for but a few moments <laughs> One That's fits impressive. a cat nap in whenever one can. <laughs> so I have you to are... Go ahead. No, go ahead, darling. <laughs> so so I have to sleep, but I I can't fall asleep. That's I think... confusing. Hmm. Or maybe it was rest, right? Yes, yes rest I think... does rest does not always require sleep. Right, okay, I can do that. And she takes Perhaps. a deep breath in and 
relaxes a little bit. Perhaps this is a good space to turn one's eye inward. Um, you know, a bit of me me uh, meditation, I believe they call it. Resting, but also remaining aware. Yes. I think Medi I'll try that. Meditation, that, that seems like the kind of thing that would be in this place. And I do want to pause us all for a moment. Uh, and discuss, now that we've built the place, where are we going and where have we been? Mm. Where did we come from? Where did we go? Ah, the old Katna Joe question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <sighs> it couldn't not be said. No. Yes, thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, Glad you're picking up what I'm putting down. <laughs> <laughs> Where did we come from? How long it, has the rain been going? If we're in early monsoon, let's say that it is perhaps the second or third day. Okay. Which oddly mirrors what it's been like here in real life. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> yeah, this is like the third day of continuous rain right now. So it just finally so... let up this afternoon. <laughs> a lot of a lot of um gloomy weather if you see it that way mm -hmm. clouds it's probably been been pretty cool early mm -hmm. spring rains are cold and the rains of monsoon are heavy and unceasing and i, I think because of that i i imagine us on a road Mm -hmm. As much as possible. As much as we yeah. can be. Pavement. Mm -hmm. So maybe this is an offshoot of a road. Maybe this is mm. a trail mm. that is kind of a, a, a stop on a journey from what? one town to, to where? To the know. next town. Probably. Yeah. If we are journeying towards the mountains and we are nowhere mm -hmm. close to it yet, mm -hmm. we are probably still in the fairly heavily forested section, mm. even though it's been, it could have been days. I'd say maybe we picked up in late till soil. Maybe we picked up in mid till soil. So it's been at most a few weeks. Okay. And this is a leisurely journey that we know is going to be long. Mm -hmm. Have we passed fields? Probably. Absolutely. I would think so. Mm -hmm. And so let's say that we have passed a town, like a farming town, a little farming village. And we've come across forest again. And we've taken a detour from the tilled fields or tilled soil, the flattened area where we are growing crops. And we have found this hollow at the edge of a forest. Mm. Mm -hmm. So we are probably quite drenched. Yeah. Uh, by this point. Um, also... Uh, we need to decide if there are kith here beyond ourselves. And we do not have to place any extra kith here. If the opportunity comes along where we feel another voice could be helpful, anyone here can pick up that kith and give them that voice. Uh, and we, you essentially play your, your character and you play another character who has become yours. Uh, we can choose to keep that person tied to that kith. We will give them a name, an animal, uh, a few natures to describe their personality. And that generally is it. That's all you need to pick up a, a kith. Um, as an example, Sorrel uh, was given uh, deer, he, him, and watchful, inquisitive, wise, and grieving, which didn't come up. 
but informed. I felt it. Informed felt the way that he was sad that that he was played. So, and there's no minimum or maximum. Um, I generally try to keep it roughly to three, uh, but Sorrel had four, um, and uh, we, if we feel like a kith is necessary to give voice to this place, we can add that. Um, at the moment, let's not. Um, Agreed. And before we begin, our final moments, um, now that we have decided everything about this place, uh, we have asked what sort of place did we tr just travel from? Uh, do we feel our journey has been long? I think we were in agreement last time that it has been. Um, and so it still would be. Do we feel that our journey from the last town has been long? I don't feel like it. No, go ahead. I I, I think we were on the same page. I don't feel like it's been long. We're still very early in the rains. We haven't mm -hmm. grown tired of them just yet. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Is there somewhere we hope to go? This could be in the immediate future. This could be in the distant future. Mm, we certainly want to go to the Painted Mountains. But mm. um, I have heard tale from some folks on the road that I encountered that in these, these parts here um, that we're coming up on, um, in the forest there is a lovely patch of just natural wild-growing daisies. And you know the bumbles love the daisies. And it's still early, but we might... We might just see them if, if we can make it. Um, I'd like to go there if we could. All right. Would not be one to deny the bumbles their favorite flower. I wouldn't. I wouldn't suggest it. Mm -hmm. And then before we begin uh, our actual journey to this hollow, uh, our final question is always, where is my home? Which we answer silently to ourselves. This answer could have changed since the last time. This answer could remain the same. I'll give you a moment and then I'll begin describing the scene. Right. We begin a few days into the month of monsoon as Pinwheel, Alice, and Kova stand before a sign on a path into the forest. Only a few steps in. This sign has eyes on it and directions to rest and to stay awake. In this moment, mm -hmm. in the pouring rain, on the edge of this forest, you can see the ground littered with the small pock marks of mud from the heavier drops falling from the trees behind the relatively smoothened out dirt road that the rain has begun to wash parts of away. Kova stands there and takes a look at this place and says this feels familiar to me not the land but the eyes well have you seen them before these eyes no other eyes yes but the feeling is the same hmm I don't know I what live. that means. She whispers to Alice. Hmm. A long time ago, I traveled by forest that had a similar, similar icons of eyes. I think that these could be the eyes of the trees. But what that means, 
Well, I danced right on past, so I would not know. Hmm. Shall we check it out for a bit? I would love to see if we can learn more. And you said the daisies were this way, weren't they? Well, I think the daisies are... Oh, we were headed... We were headed west. I think... I think they're on the way. I just, um... I don't know exactly where they are. Uh, it was just some chatter. Uh, but let's go inside. Yeah, I'm wet. Yes, the, the trees will provide some cover. Pinwheel, how about you? Oh yeah, I'm 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 I'm, I'm good with it. Um, this makes me a little nervous. It feels like these little eyes are watching us, but um. Sure. Well, if you're if you're feeling nervous, I think you should um I think you should probably hang out with this bumble here. She also gets very nervous all the time. All the time. I don't know why she's so nervous all the time, but you feel her she's shaking. She just does this all day. So I think the two of you could bring some comfort to each other. Also oh, she's right. me crazy. <laughs> yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. She takes a step over to the bumble. Thank you, Pinwheel. <laughs> um, um, I, I so... think that each of you could get a token for this. Um, for offering comfort oh, and for oh. facing for facing a situation that makes you uncomfortable. For speaking your true feelings. Mm. Um. There is also a list of several things that you can do to get tokens. Uh, I'm going to have forgot to about those. <laughs> put this down at some some point. Um, but yeah, again, the token system is the one mechanic <laughs> yeah. uh, that we use in play. Uh, you get and you give them. Um, uh, I'm told uh, by some bards of old that you do, in fact, get what you give. Um, some oh. new radicals told me that one of these things uh, a <laughs> long time ago. But, These neobardics. Um, <laughs> uh, wrong system. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but yes, the uh, uh, speaking your true feelings uh, is a way in which one can get a token. Uh, just as a reminder, because that was a little unclear last time, uh, just because I'm taking the role of guide does not mean that I am the only person who can give out tokens. Uh, you can award each other tokens um and your tokens can carry over from last time or not you choose um i will be carrying over my two <laughs> that i had from last time um but but yeah uh i will also have to copy down ways in which you get tokens and i will have to put that in the chat while we are discussing this <laughs> um as we enter into this kind of partially covered forested area, I'm imagining we come upon not a huge area, but some partially covered, maybe some branches spread across branches to make a makeshift covering over this area here. Um, and in the center, I picture a very small kind of old coals in a fire pit, maybe barely there. The ashes have been blown away by time and animals wandering through. And then around the edges are maybe some small, not full fire pits, but like sconces sort of on the ground, um, just stone there. Um, so they'll weather, but nothing in there, I don't think. And um, what do you think the kind of representations of of the gods are here? This one that seems familiar to Kova. Are there? Is there a shrine? Do you think? 
This can take any form. Uh, just because the picture on the page for this nature had a particular uh, picture does not necessarily mean that it must look like that. Um, it can take whatever form we want it to. I'm really liking your idea of stone and circle. And so I think after a moment of traveling, we can come across just off the road um, or no, in the road with the road circling around it. I like a that. setting of stone circles with perhaps four larger stone pillars and another in the center, mm -hmm. like on the cardinal directions of the uh, wherever the circle happens to be with a road around it and carved into the stones are eyes and carved into the trees surrounding this area are also eyes some large some small many close to the ground where a smaller kith or kith of our own sizes may be able to carve them themselves each one seems to have been done individually and emma do you have something to add to that or may i take a little bit of a guide moment here yes please do i think we all hear a coughing off in the distance <laughs> <coughs> just um just past the the shrine of sorts maybe a figure of a of another kith it's it's difficult to say with the rain hmm well that sounds like a somebody who could use a, a drink of water <laughs> <laughs> uh kova is going to to Approach the sound. Um, say, friend. <coughs> Are you okay. Excuse me. And I think as this individual turns around, you see a very, very old, Rottweiler. <clears throat> Excuse me, I didn't see you coming. Hello, welcome. Hello. What was um, it that you asked? I'm sorry. Are you okay? You oh, seem to have a terrible cough. Never better. <laughs> Are, are you sure you don't you don't need help? Uh, we we don't. Oh, we oh. have some. Oh, thank you. We thank have you. some herbs we could offer. We have some. <laughs> oh, thank, thank you. We got I... the good kush here. <laughs> uh, Cough it up, baby. Uh. <laughs> <We could. laughs> Oh, um, it was the first medicinal herb. <laughs> it was the first thing that came to yeah. mind, and then the second thing that came to mind completely ruined it. Medicinal um, herbs. <laughs> Off in the distance, you hear the sound of a of a cough drop brand. <laughs> Echo yodeled from the yodeled from the uh, from the painted mountains beyond. Oh, please. Alice is lighting candles and distributing them. Oh, thank around you. Around this area. Thank you. It's so nice to see someone using the shrine again. Again. Has What's it been mean? a long time since oh. you've had a visitor? I suppose you could say I am the visitor. <laughs> As are we. Well, this is nice. You see in his hand, he has a a wooden eye that he's oh. carving. And he takes um, it. 
Go ahead. There's there might be is he sitting somewhere? Is he standing somewhere? I think he's standing about three or four feet away from the main part of the shrine. Okay. And I think he's he's still under I think Michaela, you had mentioned an awning of sorts made out of branches, correct? Cut, yeah, makeshift just mm. to cut through some of the rain. I imagine he put it up himself. I think he's just at the edge of that, just before mm-hmm. he would be stepping out into the rain. Then I think before him, maybe there is a stone nearby. Maybe not part of the eye shape of the shrine itself, the eye shape of the circle. And I think I'm going to go backwards and stay in, say instead of an actual perfect circle, that it is an eye shape. Oh, it's kind of elongated. I like that. Um, mm-hmm. Almost said a bad word in sign language there. Whoops. What about <laughs> keep those, what keep about it on my hand? Yeah, we're not gonna make pointed uh, shapes with our fingers. Um, what if what if the uh, area you sit in is a circle, and the road that splits around it finishes the eye? Yes, oh. I like that. I like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. So the 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 so we keep the circular stone shapes uh, for the iris, right? Mm-hmm. And the road becomes the eye. Very good, very good. I like it. Teamwork, I love it. Yeah, that's that's this system working. I love it. Um, I'm I'm going to give you a token for for uh, describing. Um, excuse me for describing a moment or, or describing the. Blah, let me see. To marvel at something <laughs> no one has seen before. <laughs> That's what I'm giving you I'm a token giving, for. I, what, can I give you a token for being a genius? I don't <laughs> for the know. Eye? For the sure. For the eye, because I I'll think take one. I couldn't have done it without without you. I, I'll take you were the, mm-hmm. the springboard. Um, <laughs> well, speaking of landing. Um, Speaking of springing up and landing, segue to uh, Kova is going to leap atop something mm. as one of their features. And this stone that is not part of the actual shrine itself, uh, not part of the stone iris, that is a tavern name. <laughs> Gotta write that down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the stone iris there that's an episode that's title so right there. Good. Mm-hmm. all right well hey we got that one managed there we um, go. <laughs> eventually i'll tell you what i'm doing uh, <laughs> kova is going to leap atop the stone lean over with their hands like kind of behind their back and their tail swishing in mm-hmm. the curious cat kind of pose and say what is that that you're making friend Oh, <clears throat> you are quite the jumper. <laughs> I'm making a token for the uh, token. Well, it's canon now. I am yeah, making a, a <laughs> I am making a token for the eye. I'm paying my respects. I come here every day. I drop a token in. I walk back home. Oh, where do you put these tokens? Well, I lay them on the ground. They're just. As you can see, just littered around the the shrine here. I make sure that I change them out every now and then as to pay respect to the, uh, well, to the great eye. Help the great me out. Eye. Help, help me out with the name for this would deity. This... Hmm. Would this be... Oh, the, the trees of the eyes. That's right. Yeah, the eyes of the trees. So mm-hmm. I'm going to go back a little bit. Um, okay. Oh, well, I uh, every now and then I will drop these tokens. and uh, Well, every day I drop a token, and then every now and then I replace them, uh, take the old ones away so as to pay respect to the eyes of the trees. They protect us. Mm. That they, that they are doing, me. definitely. Oh, well, it is a noble work that you are doing here, friend. Yes, thank may you. I, may I join you? Oh, please, here. Uh, find what you can, carve an eye, and place it on the ground. 
That sounds hmm. good. Pinwheel, you're so good at finding things. Oh, you, you know like it. as well? Oh, I'd love to. Um, and she starts walking around and picking up little wooden bits that uh, she starts handing over to, to uh, Kova. Oh, I found this one. Oh, oh here he, I found, found another. Um, here you go. <laughs> Alice, would you so, like one? Send the precious I, little possum on a fetch quest. <laughs> Could not resist. I, <laughs> I'd be honored. Yes, please. I I would love uh, whatever you can find me. Oh, and mister, would you like one too? <clears throat> yeah, yes, of course. Thank you. <laughs> Kova is going to take the uh, largest of the, like the most panel like of mm. the things that was found. And it's not very big still. Mm. It's it's just kind of like yeah, just a, li a little thing right there. Uh, and, and Kova is going to like even hold it up to their eye mm. and like try to try to size it. And it's it's almost the right size. It's maybe a little bigger. Um, Kova has these very, very feline you know, slit pupil, very big, wide, green, blue-green eyes. They're kind of pale. Um, and so Kova's going to, to draw one of those to just kind of scratch it in with one of their claws. And as they're doing that, uh, they'll say, Well, new friend, what, uh, what do we call you? My name is Kova. Oh, this well, is Pinwheel. Hello, Kova and Pinwheel. And, and your name? I'm Alice. Oh, Alice. It's a pleasure to meet all of you. My name is... Your favorite task in any RPG. <laughs> My name is... Is Ruskin. My name is Ruskin. I, f I forgot for a moment there, you know. Thank you. <laughs> no, my name is Ruskin. I'll write forgetful <laughs> as one, <laughs> Nature. Of yeah. one of their qualities. Yeah, one of their traits. I'm sorry, I was misrepresenting these. These are called traits instead of traits. natures. Okay. Natures are places, traits are, are traits. Yes, um, my name is Ruskin. I uh, come here every day, rain or shine or cold or warmth i make my way from the nearest town which is just a couple days down the road but i have a small little hut that i stay in uh when i uh don't want to well i i have a small hut i would guess i would say that i go into town as more of a journey while as i i live close to here um but uh, Ruskin is my name, and I come here to pay respects to the trees and, and also to, well, my, my wife. Your wife? Oh, uh, my late wife. Uh, and what was her name? Her name was Blossom. Oh, a beautiful name. She was Blossom just here. as beautiful as it, as as the name itself. The Bumbles would have loved her. <laughs> um, it sounds like you would like to add grieving to the list of traits here. I would, yes. I think that is something mm -hmm. that he is uh, that is very active yeah. in his personality. And. I, I want to pause here for a moment so that we kind of going forward as we create Kith, um, the traits are in the uh, 100 teens, 120s of your 130s of your uh, um, handbook. Page 123 in the PDF lists all of the ones that the book has. There are also some symbols here. Uh, that we would like to go over. Uh, there is a double dagger symbol. These are, as you'll notice, all of the traumatized traits are listed with this symbol. That is what it means, uh, is that this is uh, a shade darker, a shade heavier than the others. 
um, a shade sadder. The other one that looks kind of like a winged sort of symbol uh, is a special trait and or a supernatural trait. Mm. Magic can mm. exist in this world, but it can take whatever form we want it to. It can be overt like a spell, or it can be the innate magic of a place, um, which is how I've always preferred it in this system. But just because I like it that way doesn't mean that you have to play it that way. Um, but uh, these, these, like, for, for example, the trait um, grieving gives you some abilities. Uh, and I would want to make sure that you're taking note of those as you're moving forward. Um, grieving kith can overflow with emotion they can hold tight to comfort and refuse to let go they can ask are you in a place to listen right now or they could take that somewhere else um again you're never limited to these choices you can always just take it where you want it to go uh forgetful doesn't happen to actually be a trait on here but uh we can add that if we want to um Loyal. I was looking for something like loyal, which felt right for him, but um, I, I didn't so find that. I have a question about mm -hmm. the place. Mm -hmm. So a hallow is a sacred place where gods and mortals mingle. Mm -hmm. Where and how might that happen with with this interaction after this interaction surrounding this interaction i'm curious mm. what do y'all think i think as we are carving our eyes in into whatever we found here i think a sense of ritual is part of the interaction that this is a ritual act that when you come to this place and the forest sees you and watches you that you give it an eye with which to watch that you become a a vessel for the forest to to be aware of itself possibly mm -hmm. i think that and and Wander Home is not very specific, as, as you've noticed with a lot of things. One of the things is the small and forgotten gods, um, which is a concept that we can sort of, like you were saying, that we can flesh out as we wish. Um, I want to try to find where that is here in the actual book to see what it says. Um or these small and forgotten gods, but there is, there's not much told about them. They, their, their adjectives are, I think the two most important parts here is that they are small. These are not big beings. These are not Abrahamic gods. <laughs> these are not Greek gods. These, these are not uh, gods in a, a, huge and all-powerful tradition mm -hmm. and that they are forgotten in that they could be neglected they could be from long ago their traditions could be lost they could be so much a part of the world that we don't always realize their presence i think for this one we can decide how do we want this to manifest this is a god of eyes of watchfulness. So I think that the manifestation is done through the act. We we create this one. We become a part of this of this god. Mm -hmm. And we take on its responsibility as as a steward of the forest, essentially. Have you ever just sat around with a group of people, it doesn't have to be a large group, two or three or more, whatever. And you're all just doing something like coloring or, you know, just some little activity, painting, whatever that you're doing with your hands. And everybody, there's that moment when everybody is quiet 
and you're all just focused on what you're doing and lost in mm -hmm. your own thoughts and you're all together, but you're, you're just enjoying the activity mm -hmm. in and of itself. And you're kind of taking that moment, taking that breath. And I think that's what this place is making me feel. We're all sitting, we're carving these eyes and taking that moment to give that sense of watchfulness over ourselves back to the forest when we're it's almost like we're borrowing that moment from the forest and then giving it mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. may i that, off oh, go ahead no please go i was just gonna say may i offer a moment that and and you can tell me if this would work or not sky uh mm -hmm. for a moment for the listeners to to see or hear something, but that our players would not, or our characters would not. In what way? Do you mean for the listeners to kind of like consider for well, themselves? Well, uh, in a way, almost as if there's a camera that has zoomed out and is looking on the mm. entire scene mm -hmm. and the camera sees something that our characters do not. Okay. Yeah. I think then for, for those of you listening, take, take that moment to yourself. And what would you notice as an eye of the forest? What would you notice within this place? And specifically, what would you notice as that quiet moment that Michaela described hits the group? Mm -hmm. What happens in the forest as that quiet synergy occurs and i don't think that's a question we as a group need to answer but maybe more so that the players or that the li listeners viewers might imagine mm -hmm. i think we can each have our own answer too mm -hmm. so yeah. like for those of you who are listening when you come up with your moment you can keep it to yourself you can share it with someone I think Kova has a moment there in, mm. in that bit where everything is quiet. Their very large ears do hear quite well. And it is raining. So I think Kova is struck not by the quietness of the voice and the absence of voice among the four kith here in this moment but by the the symphony of rain around them all and the sound of the water falling on the trees the sound of the water falling off the trees and onto the ground in puddles the sound of water rushing of water draining slowly by mm -hmm. the tapping of the rain on the awning above them and I think Kova begins to find a rhythm and begins scratching the rest of the carving out in that rhythm as they their tail sways back and forth to that that beat mm -hmm. I like that I love that What's Pinwheel thinking in this moment? Pinwheel's very focused on finding as many of those almond-shaped pieces of wood or stone or uh, nuts that, that she can. And she's looking through the forest floor trying to pick up what she can. And so she's not carving, but she's quietly focused on finding these objects and bringing them to the rest of the group and maybe making a little bowl, um, taking one of the, the offering bowls that was there and, and making a little collection of these things that she's picking up. I think as she does so, um, she 
I think she does also synchronize to that rhythm without realizing it. Um, I think that there's that rhythm that Kova is finding. Um, and I think that pinwheel is also subconsciously flowing with that rhythm. And um, just, I think she is awake, but relaxed in this moment and rested. Mind at ease. Mm -hmm. I think all of us might be able to take a token for respecting the place's rules. I think so. Yeah. I, I didn't notice it until you had said it, but no. but I we we had we are awake and we are focused, but we are also at rest and at peace. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think bef before, because there is a token I would like to spend in this moment, but I think before that, um, what does what does Alice see or notice in this moment? I think due to her nature, Alice is very much focused on the carving and how she feels, but definitely takes a moment to look around at this group of kind of odd folks who have gathered here. And she's thinking about um, Ruskin. And the bumbles are around, and she sees um, the two-headed kind of oddball out Bumble, <laughs> who uh, has a certain odd knack sometimes and she kind of takes a moment to send the bumble over to Ruskin and she's going to spend a token to um, encourage the bumble to tap into its kind of witchy powers and ease his pain as we sit here carving together <clears throat> oh hello friend <laughs> Oh, it's very sweet, isn't he? <laughs> very friendly. They're all very friendly. Don't worry. Oh, my. <laughs> well, yes, you can sit right there. <laughs> Happy buzz. Yeah. Um, in, in this moment, I think Kova also finishes the, the carving, but sees that they've drawn a, a feline eye. They've they've kind of done their, they've carved their own eye into this. And they place it down and pick up another carving and start it. This time, smaller, a little bit smaller, something easily kept in a palm. And they carve a Ruskin's eye. And in that, in the carving, puts a floral petal pattern onto mm. it. And I'm spending a token uh, to connect with someone on a personal level. And I'm going to give this token to, to Ruskin and say, friend, you are... From, from what you have said, you have given many tokens to to the eyes of the forest. You've you've watched over them, and I think in turn they've watched over you. And I think they're also watching over Blossom. And I want to offer that to you, a way to remember that. They're looking out for you, too. And I will give it to Ruskin. Well, yeah. when I walked here this morning, nothing could have prepared me for the kindness of the strangers I might meet today. Well, I don't have the words that, 
that might thank you truly enough as as I, I wish I could. The words are not needed, but uh, perhaps a dance could express the feeling. They'll offer their hand. And uh, he he takes it as a... He takes it and it's very clear that he does not know how to dance well. Um, but he's following as best he can, but he's looking mm-hmm. at his feet exclusively. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Co- Kova picks up on this immediately. Uh, <laughs> dance naturally flows through them. And I think that they're, they attempt to to loosen Ruskin up a little bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> give them give them a flowing slow movement. This is this is a person who who is slowing down and mm-hmm. who has come to a place to a speed that that he's found. And and I think that Kova recognizes this and that they're maybe a little too fast for him. Adjusting. Mm-hmm. And adjusts adjusts to his tempo. And like mm-hmm. picks up Pinwheel in the process. <laughs> Pinwheel starts dancing along with you with energy and excitement. <laughs> well, okay, this sounds wonderful. Um, I would love to keep dancing. Um, Alice, do you want to join in too? Oh, darling, these paws do not get on the dance floor. However, she's going to reach into her overall pocket and pull mm-hmm. out a pan flute. And she's nice. going to play a folk tune for y'all to dance mm-hmm. to. As as we dance, or rather, does anybody want to do anything as we dance? Because my next idea was for after we finish the dance. Um, Kova has a tambourine that they will take out, but as their other four limbs happen to be busy (laughs) and with, uh, spinning pinwheel around, uh, apropos of her name, uh, (laughs) and, uh, attempting to help Ruskin, uh, to the best of, of his ability join in, uh, uh, their tail will curl around the rim of the tambourine. (laughs) <laughs> and keep the rhythm for that. Very nice. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. I love this image. <laughs> I think with with the idea that I had as um, as the dancing winds down, the eye that you carved for Ruskin has been clutched in his in his paw, his hand, as you've been dancing. Um, such so that it has been actually difficult to lead him because he won't <laughs> let go of this. Um, and you can't really make a, a handhold with him. Um, but he, he slows down. Oh, <clears throat> well, that's enough for an old man like myself. But thank you. <laughs> Haven't danced like that since I was a young lad. Um, <laughs> Uh, I You're su- most welcome. Thank you. I suppose the eyes of the trees wouldn't mind if I kept just this one. <laughs> and he takes it and he puts it in his uh, collared shirt that he's wearing. And in the pocket of his collared shirt. That's heartwarming. Um... After we have danced to our heart's content, um, I, I think I'll leave these spare candles here for you, Ruskin, if you ever, you know, come out here and carve and just want a little light. Um, but otherwise, my friends, I think, is it time for us to brave the wet again? Yes, I think a, a walk through the woods would be a good idea at this point. Or maybe even back to the main road. <laughs> we do have the whole of the half 
in front of us. So we do, yes. And that road is somehow a little better than the forest floor. Somehow, barely. <laughs> uh, it's strange. I thought it would be less wet here, but it seems to the raindrops are fewer, but they are. Definitely they're large, fatter, aren't they? Yeah. Much bigger, yes. <laughs> it's almost, <laughs> almost like as, a waterfall. <laughs> almost as large as one of your bumbles. <laughs> oh, that's close. Have you have you seen that baby? It is getting so big now. Sorry, <laughs> I'm just all about the bumbles. Um, <laughs> I yes, I, I I wish perhaps we can um along the way perhaps we'll find some. Some way to make a, a, a umbrella or something to protect our heads. But um, I don't have that skill, so we'll have to run into somebody. We'll have to uh, seek that out, for sure. Perhaps in the next town. Well, that's something to look forward to, isn't it? I would say so. Pinwheel, are you ready? She takes her rucksack whatever you would call it. I can't remember the term, but the... Uh... That would be a bindle. Bindle. Yes! Thank you. I'm writing that word down. Yeah, she takes Good her word. bindle, and she looks at Ruskin. She says, um, do you think the eyes of the trees would mind if I, t if I took one as well? Um, and Ruskin looks at her and just says... <laughs> I think you'd better not. And <laughs> she just, oh, <laughs> okay. Um, I'll leave him here then. And she <laughs> ties up her bindle and looks back at Alice and Cove and <laughs> says, "Okay, I'm ready." All right. Well, Ruskin, you have been just beyond a delight to spend this very rainy afternoon with and I, I i'd like to thank you for your company the delight has been mine <laughs> that's a little corny <laughs> all right uh, all right come along bumbles you lead the way um pinwheel are you feeling better uh i, I can i can watch over nervous nelly over there Oh, I mean, I've kind of made a friend at this point. Um, that's all right. I can hang out with Nelly. Okay, all right. If if you just let me know, I I'm very I'm I'm thankful for you too, Pinwheel. You and Ruskin. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Fuck. <laughs> I'm just, That's amazing. Alice, Alice is just in the back, like, okay, honey. Okay. You 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 okay, basically honey. Han soloed her. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I know. <laughs> I, know. <laughs> I love it. Well, uh... I think with this moment of laughter, this moment of joy in what was a dark and gloomy place uh, and this car alarm that is going off on the side. I don't think my <laughs> mic is picking it up, but great timing, buddy. Uh, <laughs> in this moment of joy, this moment of laughter, I think our, our three journeyers take to the road again, braving the rains of monsoon, looking for an umbrella they don't happen to have, <laughs> and off to the next town. Or wherever their journey takes them. Thank you. Until the next, until the next. Yeah. Whatever comes, I guess. Until <laughs> the next time. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, I that feels like a good place to call it. Um, yeah. Thank you, uh, fellow journeyers, for joining me uh, tonight, and thank you, listeners. Um, I hope that you you also had a nice, quiet afternoon in the forest, uh, wherever you may be. So thank you. We'll see you next time.
Two, seven, nine. Bye, everybody.